Welcome, folks, to another look at law and order, or disorder here in Appalachia, with a story about a real Appalachian outlaw. Hello, folks, I'm Steve Gilley, along with Rod Mullins, and this is Stories, A History of Appalachia. Now, before we get started, make sure you go down below and click that subscribe button and ding the bell so you get updates on all our podcast stories as they come out. And we'd appreciate it if you'd give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. Hello, Rod. Hello, Steve. How's things going for you? Oh, it's going just fine. And what we've got today is a um, one of our podcast stories from a few years back, one of the ones that I think a lot of folks liked about an outlaw from southwest Virginia and east Tennessee. So, um, you know, this should be a good one. Yeah, well, you know, this is this is one of those scripts, too, that uh, we reflect back on and we kind of look at and say that, you know, a lot of things were going on out in the West at one time or another. Well, you know, there were just as much, you know, things going on here in the Appalachian region and the Appalachian Mountains, just as much as what was going on out West. So this is this is one of those scripts. When you talk about outlaw, you're definitely hitting the nail on the head with this one. Yeah, this guy's had books written about him. He's pretty well known. Not as well known, though, as Pretty Boy Floyd or Bonnie right. and Clyde and folks of the same era, but fairly well known nonetheless. Now, the 1920s and the 1930s, well, they were the time for those gangster heroes that I just mentioned. And the East Tennessee, Southwest Virginia area produced its own outlaw in the notorious, yes, I said notorious because that's what they termed him as, the notorious Kenny Wagner. Now, William Kenneth, or Kenny Wagner, was born just outside Gate City, Virginia, on February 18, 1903, one of eight children of Charles Monroe Wagner and Nancy Clinton Wagner. Now, growing up, there was nothing he liked more than shooting, and this boy developed into one of the best sharpshooters to come out of the hills of southwest Virginia. In fact, Wagner was so good that at age 16, he joined the Richard Brothers Circus as a bronco buster and trick shooter. But that's not what he did in the long run, is it, Rod? No, it isn't, Steve, because after he left the circus, Wagner began running moonshine and, of all places, not southwest Virginia, but Mississippi, which is where he had a run-in with the law involving a stolen watch and an escape from the local jail, leaving a deputy sheriff dead and also Kenny on the run. Now, according to Kenny Wagner, the local sheriff was in on the moonshine running. Well, pretty much there were a lot of, you know, law-abiding supposedly sheriffs and so forth back then that were on the wrong side of the law. But, in fact, he had hired Wagner to haul the liquor. Now, it turns out, according to Wagner, that when the FBI showed up, in the county to investigate the manufacturing and distribution of said moonshine, that sheriff became afraid that Kenny Wagner was going to go and spill the beans. He was going to rat him out. So he concocted a plan to kind of get him out of the way. In late 1924, the sheriff gave Kenny a watch to, quote unquote, keep for a friend. He was then promptly arrested for possession of stolen goods. How convenient the watch, and then put in the county jail in Loosedale, Mississippi. Now, Kenny decided that it wouldn't be good for his health to stay in said jail, so he escaped by overpowering a guard and stealing a horse. On Christmas Eve 1924, a posse headed up by Deputy McIntosh was sent out to find and bring Kenny Wagner back to jail. Wagner discovered McIntosh as he headed to a shack in which Wagner was he was all held up there. Well, that set off a gun battle between the posse and that sharpshooter from Scott County, Virginia. Things did not go well for Deputy McIntosh as he was shot and killed. Kenny Wagner then hightailed it out of Mississippi back home where supposedly, with help from his family and friends, he managed to hide out from the authorities. Mississippi put out a $1,000 reward for Wagner's capture, dead or alive. Now, on April 25th, 1925, word got out that Kenny was to meet with his younger sister near the Holston River near Kingsport. His sister was about to graduate from high school, and well, they hadn't seen each other in quite a while, so they made plans to meet on the Long Island of the Holston. 
However, the Kingsport police sent five officers to the location to ambush the fugitive at the meeting. Now, once again, a gun battle ensued between Wagner and the police officers, with the result that two policemen were shot dead and one other seriously wounded. Wagner took off, first swimming across the Holston River, then running for his life until he could steal a horse and make it back to Virginia. Wagner eventually entered a store in Waycross, Virginia, and surrendered to the store owner on the condition that the reward money, $1,000 offered by Mississippi authorities for his capture, be split with his sister so that she could go on to college. Now, Wagner was tried in Sullivan County Criminal Court and found guilty of first-degree murder and sentenced to die by electrocution. But that sentence was set aside and he was granted a new trial. And that trial was to be held in August. Now, Kenny never made it to that trial as on July 10th, in a very famous escape, he and other inmates at the Sullivan County Jail in Bluntville jumped the guards as they opened the jail door for prisoners returning from work detail. The men disarmed the guards and Wagner fled out the open door and took off for Mexico. While in Mexico, he became even more notorious, Rod, for bank and train robberies. Kenny Wagner eventually decided to return to America, coming back to Texas. Well, Kenny settled in Texarkana, Arkansas, where he got into yet another fight, killing two brothers, Will and Sam Carper. He surrendered to Arkansas Sheriff Lily Barber and returned to the Mississippi for trial on that first murder. Now, Rumors are, Steve, that Kenny and Lily were having an affair, but that's why he decided to surrender to her. But by this point, Kenny Wagner was wanted for murders in Mississippi, Arkansas, and Tennessee. Since the first killing in Mississippi, that state got the first crack at him for the murder of Deputy McIntosh two years earlier. Wagner was tried in 1926, and he was sentenced to life in prison for that crime. Wagner settled in for a long stay in the Mississippi prison system as well, I guess he had to. He had no other place to go at that point. He was settled in at the Parchman's Farm prison. Well, Kenny Wagner, Rod, was a smart and crafty man, and he eventually got himself assigned as a trustee and head trainer of the prison's bloodhounds. In fact, he was allowed to go with prison guards, armed and on horseback. That's the prison guards and him, to be honest with you. They armed him, put him on a horse, to track escapees with his dogs. In 1940, he took advantage of this trust and escaped from Parchman and promptly headed back to southwest Virginia. His freedom lasted until 1943 when he was captured there and returned to Mississippi. Now, Wagner again persuaded prison officials to allow him to train the bloodhounds. And this rod is where his last escape took place in a most interesting way. Well, it seems, Steve, that while training the dogs to scent escaped prisoners, Wagner also trained them to not track him. Hmm, not bad. By whipping the dogs if they followed his scent. Not good. And it worked because in 1948, he walked away from Parchman yet again, as Steve mentioned, visiting family and friends in Tennessee and Virginia from time to time, but always returning to Mississippi to the small town of Wahalik. Now, that's where he took on the alias of Big Jim, okay? Kenny Wagner then made the FBI's most wanted list in the 50s and would have lived the rest of his life there as a free man, but for a woman. You see, he was living in the residence of a woman there in Wahalik, and she happened to have another suitor. Now, that man, who was jealous of Big Jim, uh, found out his real identity and told the law where they could find Wagner. And in 1956, Kenny Wagner was arrested for the last time. And by this point, Wagner was sick and he was okay with going on back to Parchman. He again resumed training the dogs and believe it or not, he died of a heart attack while petting one of the animals on March 9th, 1958. Now, news of his death was so big in Kingsport, Tennessee, that the Kingsport Times reported it as front-page headline news. Now, there have been songs and ballads recorded about the adventures of Kenny Wagner, as well as books and comics and pulp magazines. And that, um, that last incident where he had the heart attack, I think, Rod, was the most interesting one. Apparently, uh, he had been having some chest pains. 
Mm-hmm. And they put him into uh, the prison hospital, but he really wanted to, to see those puppies. So they bring the puppies in there. He bends down to pick up the puppy and falls over dead. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. That, that was the way that ended up a, a very ignominious end to a very interesting life. Uh, apparently he was so charming. I mean, mm-hmm. think about that. He uh, escapes from the prison by talking the warden into letting him train the bloodhounds. They catch him. <laughs> they put him yeah. back. They can't, He escapes again. They catch him, put him back. And what do they do? They put him back in charge of the bloodhounds. <laughs> well, and he sweet talks them over and over about certain things, and it, that's what he mm-hmm. gets. And, uh, you know, but again, you know, getting back to this whole thing there toward the end when he went back to Parchman, you know, it's it's kind of sad to know that he met an end like that. And mm-hmm. I would call he probably wanted to go out in a bang, so to speak, but he really went out more so, I guess, in a whimper more so than he went out with a bang. But, you know, by that time, people knew him and everything. And it was, like you said, front page news in the Kingsport Times News once that they got uh, word that he had passed away. Yeah, and he was relatively young, too, I think in his 50s. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, that's that, folks, is the story of the notorious Kenny Wagner. Another bit of the history of this place we call home, Appalachia. Thanks for listening. Now, you can listen to the audio version of the Stories Podcast on your favorite podcast app. Be sure to subscribe. Again, thanks for listening. Till next we meet, I'll take care. So long, everybody. So long. <laughs>